By the way, worship. God has told us exactly how he wants to be worshiped. Revelation 4, 8, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, it's amazing that true biblical worship is a response to that holiness. Verse 9, whenever these creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him, they fall down. So look at the focus of worship in verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. By your will they exist and were created. Now, it's early in the morning. But it's time to practice something. And we're going to practice this hour and next hour. As believers facing the end of days, we, we need to be reminded of our seven greatest needs. Did you know that Jesus tells us what we need? He said, I'm all you need, and he tells you what we need. What we need is what only God supplies, so we can make it through life pleasing him. Now, for a minute, there are five verses all of you have memorized. And I would like to have a group recitation out loud of these verses. Do you know what five they are? It's the five verses over one and a half billion people on earth have memorized. And at this moment, they can all say them out loud, and so can you. We'll practice. You ready? Our Father, who art... Ah, oh, there you go. See, I saw it happen. Did you know you know that? Did you know a billion and a half people know that? Do you know what most people do with it? They just recite it. Jesus didn't say recite this. He said, after this manner. What he said is, this is the framework of what you need most to ask me for all through your life so that you make it. So what we're going to do, let's all stand and watch this. We're going to, you are going to read the yellow because you know it. And then I'm going to remind you of what that yellow part tells you that God wants from us. God wants me to be connected to him. God wants me to see him high and lifted up. So he regularly wants me to do this. Now that's a great thing. I, I think we all should do that, you know, to get awakened. I like it. Uh, but here we go. It's early in the morning. You start and you read the yellow. Here's my first and greatest need. I need God to connect me to that throne. I need God to focus me that apart from him, I can't do anything. That's why this prayer starts out with, you are in heaven, you're the one that Jesus talked about, you're seated on the throne, and I want to hallow your name. Okay, secondly, you read the yellow. Do you know what that means? You know what kingdom is? Kingdom is a king. And if you're not the king, you're a subject. There's only two things in a kingdom, king and subjects. I need you, God, to control me because I was born controlling myself and wanting my own way. So every time I pray the Lord's Prayer, I, I, I'm saying, Lord, I need to connect with you on the throne, and now we're connected. God, I want to step in my little chalk circle I talked to you about and I'm saying, God, I need you to control me because I'm like a sheep that goes astray. I want my own way. Today, I want to do your will. Number three, here you go. You get the yellow. God's will. How much do people want to know God's will? I mean, that's one of the big questions. What is God's will? How do I know God's will? How do I know I'm doing God's will? God's will. I need God to lead me. He said two words. This is how Jesus called his disciples. What did he say? Follow me. That's all he wants. He's going and we follow him. And so it's me saying, God, I need you to lead me. That's the only way your will will be done. Next, the middle of the prayer. Notice it's daily. You know what God wants? Me to need him every day. And the amount you need him is reflected in how much you connect to him in prayer. And that's why Paul said we should pray without what? He, Paul was advocating constant connection. Constant. And, and when we pray and God supplies, we go, wow, you, you did it. It's in my life. Thank you. Okay. Then he says this. You? Wow. I need God 
to do what only God can do. He can cleanse me. I, if I allow sins to build up, I, I don't get along with other people. I grieve the spirit, I don't get along with him. Only God can cleanse me. And then, and lead us not to temptation. Next week we're going to talk about demons and Satan, and they're worse than you ever imagine. They're more horrible than you could ever imagine. And I need God to protect me from them. Because Satan has a singular purpose. He wants to kill and steal and destroy. He wants to confuse and disrupt and thwart. And God is the only one that can protect me. I can't protect myself. And that's an interesting, interesting thought. Here we go. Here's the last one. Then you're done. For If you really think about what you just read, you're saying it's all about you, God. It's not about me. Yours is the kingdom. That's what I'm living for. Yours is the power. That's what I need. Yours is the glory. I don't want any of it. Did you know God said I won't share my glory with anyone? Do you know what it says? Humble yourself in the sight of God and he'll lift you up. But otherwise, God resists the proud. He fights against us. Every shred of pride in our life, God is resisting it. And you don't want God to be resisting your life because he's really good at it. He's good at taking your wheels off of your chariot like he did to Pharaoh. So I need God to empty me. Humility is a choice. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. It's a choice. You know what it says in Colossians 3? Clothe yourself with humility. It's a choice. Okay, you may be seated. To stay in touch with God every day, I need to ask him to focus me. I want to be connected to you, to control me. I want to do your will. Supply me. I want you to show your power in my life. I want to see you every day. Cleanse me, because I I don't want to grieve your spirit. I don't want to quench your spirit. I don't want to hinder what you want to do. Protect me. I don't want the devil to deceive me. I don't want him to thwart me from doing your will. And empty me now so you get all the glory.